Okay, y'all. Just drop whatever you're doing and turn up your radio, cause it's time for body love. Here's what happened last time. Some of his organs could be life-saving to someone, to several people, but we still need the express consent of his family before we can proceed with any further plans for donation. Well, maybe this is Fidelia coming out now. Mama? Well, they sent me out here to tell you the decision. Rosalind says no. Mama, are you sure? What? She says she does not want any desecration of Miles' body. And she says, quote, tell that doctor to go away and not bother about this anymore. End quote. Well, I appreciate your help in this matter, but I still need to speak with the closest relative, and that's Mrs. Armstrong. Excuse me. Then I'm going back in there with you. I'm not going to let Rosalind agree to anything she's going to regret. Mrs. Love, please. This really is a matter for Mr. Armstrong's next of kin, and only his next of kin. I'm sorry. Well, they really do know what they're doing, Mama Mabel. Child, just hush. Maya's right, Mama. Don't you start in on me. You're grown up, but I'm still your mama. And you, Missy, you are my granddaughter, and I'll turn you over my knee. Mama, this really is none of our business, and we should just stay out of it. This is for Ross and for Dale. Well, I just can't take this. I gotta, uh, I don't know, but I gotta get away from here. Nessa, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I'm going to look for your father. Mama, what does she mean about Miles maybe having a child, a daughter? I never... Maya, you know how Mama gets sometimes. She's 70 years old, and sometimes I wonder if she isn't getting a little bit, you know. Man, I'm glad that's over. What happened to Mama Mabel? I thought she'd be out here ready to wrestle me to the ground. She went away mad. That's all right. As long as she went away. So, you and Roz made the decision? Oh, yeah. She wants to do the donation. So that's what we're going to do. She says that's what Miles would have wanted. Yes. I'm sure that's what he wanted. Please, don't start crying again. All right? I mean it. Look, you can't tell day from night in here. But according to my watch, it's way past supper time. And I know it sounds cruel, I know it sounds heartless, but if I don't get something to eat... No, you're right. I haven't eaten since early this morning, and, well, if if Roz is okay, and if we can find Saul, we really should. You want me to go look for Saul? Please, baby. Tell him to meet us down in the lobby, and we'll all go over together. Okay. Now, wait a minute. I hear you saying something about going away. Oh, Lord. It's Sir Galahad again. Fidelia, time's up. Hi, Bryson. Ladies. Now, Fidelia, I know you've got your business with Rosalind straightened out, so now you can finally go down and get that cut on your head stitched up. And I'm going to take you down if I have to drag you. What is this? Your day off? Shouldn't you be cruising the streets in your ambulance? I finished my shift already. My job right now is to get you downstairs for stitches so that pretty head of yours won't be scarred for life. I was about to go get some nourishment so I can maintain my glucose levels. That's a noble goal. And you can catch up with your friends here at the restaurant later. But first, emergency room. Don't know what's important in life. Don't ever think about anything besides Mabel? what's good. Mabel. Mo, been looking everywhere for you. Looking for me? I'm the one that just found you, wandering around, muttering to yourself. Mo, you are not going to believe what Rosalind and Fidelia have decided to do. They're going to let those doctors cut that dear Christian man up and send parts of him all over the country. They don't understand. Now, now calm down for just a minute. Calm down. How can I calm down? Don't you see? Mabel, that you... think about this. We wouldn't have Roz right now if Reverend Higgins thought that way. 
He gave up one of his kidneys to save her life. You figure he's gone against God's will, that he's disrespecting his body? Well, tell the truth, I don't know. Or what if, if it was one of the grandkids up there? If it was Maya, Saul, or TJ who needed something that you could give them, you'd do it in a heartbeat. What are you getting at? Well, I never thought about it before, but I'm going to do it too. I'm going to donate my organs when I die, and I think you should too. Free at last, free at last, and oh lord, I am not believing this. Branson, am I going to have to call a cop to get rid of you? The name is Bryson, and I'm just showing a healthy concern in a patient. You've been sitting on this bench for the last half hour, the whole time I was in there. I told you I'm off duty. My next shift isn't until tomorrow morning. Uh Uh-huh. I knew sooner or later you'd start talking about tomorrow morning. Kevron! Over here! Oh, yeah! Yeah, hey. Fidelia Walker, right? Oh, I've seen you've been in the shop for some minor repairs. Just a few stitches. Hit my head on the table at Body Love, and this guy came for me in his ambulance, and I haven't been able to get rid of him since. Hi, Bryson Underwood. Aren't you Kevron Higgins? Uh, Used to drive delivery for the retirement home? Well, that's me you're thinking of. But I do prefer just the one name. We can leave my family name out of it. I got you. Preacher's kids. They always try to distance themselves from their parents. Yeah, and no wonder. As for me, it's my first name you'll remember in the future because I am on my way to being the next big thing. Got a record contract coming and soon I'll be pure money. Yeah, that's right, Kevron. I'll jump for joy sometime when I can move without sending jolts of pain through my stitches. Mm, I'm going to hold you to that. Meanwhile, you wouldn't happen to know the whereabouts of one Maya Baxter. I've been looking for her. Yeah, actually, I think she and Vanessa and Saul went to Big Buns to get some food. Disgusting. But that grease pit's the only place open this time of night. Yeah, you got that right. I... Well, I might just ride out there and have a few words with that young lady. I'll catch you later. Okay. What's your problem with Kevron? You were looking at him like he was some kind of bug. That boy used to be trusted to deliver medications to the retirement home. They let him go after they finally noticed how short their shipments were and what drugs tended to always be missing. You're crazy. That kid's the smartest person I know. He'd never do anything that stupid. I don't know. I just think anybody would be taking a real risk if they trusted him for even one minute. Stay tuned for more Body Love right after this. And now, back to Body Love. Saul, we've been looking everywhere for you. I'm sorry, Mama. I was just visiting Reverend Higgins and Mrs. Higgins. Oh, you were not. I was. You can go right in there and ask them. Well, that was very thoughtful of you, Saul. Very considerate. What were you doing, Dr. Saul, practicing your bedside manner? Maybe. (laughs) Maybe I do plan to be a doctor. (laughs) Well, listen, my son, the doctor, we're thinking there's not much more we can do around here, so we should finally get something to eat today. Yeah, I'm... Yeah. How about big buns? Big buns? That's all grease. Can't we go somewhere healthier? If you know somewhere else that's open at this time of night. Well, he's got you there. Mm. We'd have to drive for miles to find someplace else that's open. So, big buns it is. What about Fidelia, Mama? Fidelia's a big girl. She can take care of herself. You did not have to drive me over here, Tyson. I think you'd drive me around if I was hypoglycemic and had just gotten fresh stitches in my head. Oh, you think so? After you, my lady. Please. Now, where are they? Didn't expect this dump to be so crowded. Oh, there's Maya. Hey! Fidelia, hey! Mom and Sala over at that table over there. See them? 
Where are you going? Just going out for some fresh air. It's too stuffy and crowded in here for me. You got that right. Come on, Tyson. You couldn't have picked someplace better? This is all that's open at this time of night, and you know it. Here's a menu for you. There's only one. We can share this one. We can take turns. How about that instead? Lord, look at this. Garbage. I can't eat this. There must be something healthy here. I can tell the waitress to bring me something loaded with grease and fat only. Hold the grease and fat. I'm getting the double bacon cheeseburger with cheese fries. Now, I gave you credit for more sense than that. That's good meat. And cheese is good for you. Saul, it's loaded with grease. Ever see the pan after they've done cooking the bacon? You could paint a house with it, the grease is so thick. That junk goes right into your arteries and it sticks there. Forever. Okay, oh well, um, how about the grilled chicken with these vegetables on the side? Yeah. Now you're talking. Um, what are you having, um, Bryson? I bet you eat healthy all the time. Uh, I'll have, uh, their vegetable soup. I don't usually eat anything after six o'clock at night. Good for you. And what about Vanessa? This has been one of the worst days of my life. And I am having the chocolate chip pancakes with extra butter with a side order of sausage links. Good plan. Then we can just take you straight on back to the hospital that we just came out of. Well, now here's a coincidence. I come looking for a quick bite to eat, and instead I found the beautiful Maya Baxter. Hey, Kevron. You're looking fine as usual, if I may offer that observation. Nice to see you, too. Nice to see anybody I feel I can really talk to. Hey, well, that's me, as you know. Climb on in. I can't. I should go back into where my mom and the others are. I just came out here to walk and to think. Ah, uh, it's heavy thinking you're doing. This typically means there's a decision to make. It's more like a mystery to solve. My grandmother said something tonight that was strange. And when I tried to get my mom to explain it, she changed the subject. I mean, deliberately brushed me off like this was all about something I'm not supposed to know. I am. My sweet, say no more. Hop aboard the magic carpet and I'll fly you all over town. You can tell me all about the sordid details and I will do anything in my power to help you. I can't just go in the car with you and drive away, Kevron. My my mother doesn't know where I am. And you never keep a secret from your mother, right? Right. Even when she is keeping a secret from you? You know something? You're right. And I do need somebody I can trust. Well, you know you can always trust me. Better be here again next time to hear what's going to happen on Body Love. You know, Dr. Ellis, I have to admit, our eating habits aren't the best. With my family history, we really need to do a better job. (laughs) You're right, Saul. Poor eating habits can make it very difficult to control problems like high blood pressure, diabetes, and high cholesterol, which lead to heart disease, kidney disease, and stroke. But what about exercise, Doc? Good job. We need to combine physical activity with diet to keep us healthy. (laughs) I can't imagine my family exercising. Now, how do I get them to do that? Exercise can be done in many ways, Saul. For example, washing and waxing a car for, for an hour or so, gardening for 30 to 45 minutes, or even pushing a stroller a mile in 30 minutes. Stair walking can all be considered forms of exercise. That can serve to lengthen life and reduce your risk of hypertension, diabetes, and heart disease if done on a consistent basis. Man, Doc, I wouldn't think that was exercise, but I can see how it can make my family more active. Increased activity is exactly right, Saul. I do recommend, however, that before someone begins a new exercise routine that they consult with their doctor. Well, now I can share what I know to my family and friends. Thanks, Doc. This was Body Love, Episode 28. Written by the Body Love Writers Group. Recorded at Boutwell Studios, Jeff McKee Engineer, and directed by Will York. Featured in the cast were Audrey Quinn, Cheryl Hall, Tina Wilson, Ken Talley, James A. McCarty Jr., 
Shalithia Williams, Jim Whitson, Chris Talley, and Will York. Body Love is a project of the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Public Health in conjunction with the UAB Department of Theater. Lee Shackelford and Yoko Kawamura are producers. Executive producer is Dr. Connie Kohler. Support for the Body Love radio drama project is provided by a matching grant from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Princeton, New Jersey, along with the Joseph S. Bruno Charitable Foundation, the Community Foundation of Greater Birmingham, and the Carefree Fund of the Community Foundation of Greater Atlanta. Additional support for this episode was provided by the Alabama State Council on the Arts and the National Endowment for the Arts. Find out more about Body Love on our website, www.bodylove.org.